Even a short drive on any British road will convince you of the presence of good and badness. But this should not surprise us, for a scan of the news headlines will reveal saints and heroes mixed inextricably with sinners or worse. The result is we shake our heads in confusion. We write off others to the wicked plots they weave, or we give in to a guilty sense of inadequacy when we hear of the altruistic, even sacrificial acts of often humble benefactions. And all this brings us to our text from Matthew for today. I'll read it to you now, or a portion at least. Let us hear then the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sows good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and they went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the household came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your fields? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. In harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Amen. Here then, we hear questions of good and evil raised. So it's helpful to remember that Matthew's audience was a small and embattled community of believers who were suffering persecution. Their ardent hope was the imminent return of Christ to save them from their oppressors. No wonder then, they were asking, why are we being made to suffer when the bad prosper? More broadly, why does evil visit itself on good people? Perhaps there is no more germane question for today. Well, this is a time when medical, nursing and care staff have been tested to breaking point when the most vulnerable have suffered most outrageously, and when the powerful have often been contemptuous of the fate of others and the danger of this evil pandemic. Therefore, we could rightly ask the same question as Matthew's perplexed flock. We too are trying to fathom out why bad things happen to decent people. Well, in the intervening millennia, since Matthew wrote down his account of this Jesus parable, we are rather more accepting of the still unpalatable truth that bad things, even bad individuals, just happen. And we have done that by realising that most folks, including ourselves, are a mix of the savoury and the unsavoury. We are all an amalgam of gold and dross, we are indeed like an onion with layers of what we can justifiably be proud of and what we should not be giving house room to. In simple terms, we are like the fields in this parable. We have both weeds and wheat. We are a fertile ground for crops of great benefit or can easily be a mess of uselessness. In a way then, we all have a spark of the kingdom of heaven and the odour of quite another place. On the face of it, this leaves us feeling a tad helpless. Yet we can also take a life lesson from this parable. For with God's help, we could be the reapers in our own personalities. We could grasp the nettle, literally, and seek a harvest, a harvest of the best that we can do, and bind up with the bin the worst. We could, indeed, with Christ's advice and encouragement, change the ratio, the ratio of good to bad, in ourselves. Well, hopefully so. If this wasn't the case, where would be the hope for ourselves and the rest of humanity? How, then, do we progress? 
Well, yesterday on the Scottish News, there was a picture of the Kelvin Glove Art Gallery in Glasgow. Now that was a trip down memory lane. There was a primary school boy. I attended a weekly art class there on a Saturday morning. It was taught by a Miss Jean Irvin, who was much a pioneer, as ever there was, of children, children's art education. In fact, I still have a photograph taken of myself by the Glasgow Herald for an article on her outreach. During this lockdown, I have unearthed my paints. However, I quickly realised that I had forgotten more than I had learned. In truth, some of my paintings of ten years ago seem now beyond my ability to recreate. However, with daily practice, a bit of study and a bucket of perseverance, I am once more getting better. Similarly with our character gardening project, put simply, practice makes perfect and good will out bad. There is an urban myth amongst we Glaswegians that the art gallery was built the wrong way round. And to add colour to the story, it is said the architects of John Simpson jumped from one of its towers in despair when the error was realised. In reality, he always intended that the magnificent great entrance would face the River Kelvin and that newly palace, Le- or palace of learning. Glasgow University at Gilmore Hill. May this time of relative inactivity then be the perfect opportunity for pulling down a few things we may be building the wrong way round. In this time when we feel such gratitude to the few, may we bind up those pesky parasites in our life's practice and practice God's beauty, beauty in his architecture in our lives. May the entry to our lives always be facing our blueprint, our blueprint in Christ Jesus. Since then we will cultivate what is worth developing and be less distracted by our own wayward tears. We will have a barn full of good produce. We will be worthy of being a field in the gradual coming kingdom, the kingdom of heaven.